Hey you guys, it's your girl the Bria Serenity and I'm back at you with another prophetic word. And this prophetic word is coming from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 18 verses 14, 15. Um, and 18. I'm going to read the entire passage for you guys to give you guys some context. And if this is really just for single mothers, mothers who don't have a community, you've been struggling to get help that you need, you've been struggling to get by, um, not even because you don't have the funds, but just because you don't have the support, right? You don't have a lot of people coming to your aid. You don't have a lot of people helping you with your children. You don't have a lot of people who have been really supporting you in the ways the Lord has called many people to support you. There have been people who were placed in your life that had assignments that forsook their assignments. They basically just said, forget this, I'm not doing this, um, and left you to dry, and left you to dry, um, and did not do what they were supposed to do. There's also a lot of people sitting around, you know, who could be helping you, but they're not. They're just sitting around um, and not doing anything, and the Lord is saying that he's sending help. Help is on the way help is on the way the lord wants you to know that help is on the way you need to be praying for your divine destiny helpers some of you um, have people that have been assigned to you specifically by god that are going to help you get forward in life they are meant to be in your life to help you transform to help you become the version of yourself that you always were you just needed help becoming her okay you just needed help becoming her and these people are going to help you, but you have to be in a space to receive the help and receive divine wisdom. We're going to read um, Exodus chapter 18. I'm going to start at verse 13 and work my way down. Verse 13, where it says, Moses acts as a judge. And it came to pass on the marrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from morning until evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come to me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the status of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt shew them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Okay, so that was Exodus chapter 18, verses 13 through 20 that I just read. As I was reading this, it was just confirmation that... Um, the Lord is sending help. A lot of you women who have been called to my channel have an anointing on your life. You have a call that is on your life to ministry in some way um, that you have. And that's one of the reasons why you have been drawn to my videos. Okay, a lot of you think you've been called to my page because of God-ordained marriages and kingdom marriages, but it's so much bigger than that. And the Lord is confirming that there is a call on your life. And if you are a mother, the Lord says he sees that you have been doing a lot of this alone. He sees that there's a lot of people who are just standing around. He sees that there's a lot of people who see that you are in need and that you are indeed weary. That you have been crying out to God and asking, Lord, where are my helpers? Lord, I need help. I'm tired. I'm doing all this on my own. When are these people going to come? And the Lord is confirming today that help is on the way. They're going to come and help you and they're going to help put order into your life. They are going to help set things straight. You are no longer going to be doing this alone. This anointing that is on your life is so heavy that you need people to help keep you lifted because if you don't, you will weary away. This is why so many prophetic people struggle in this world because they try to do everything alone not knowing that they need to be surrounded by like-minded individuals people who are equally yoked with them to go on this journey because when you are prophetic when you have an anointing of any kind on your life and you try to do this walk alone or you try to do a walk with people who are not like-minded or equally yoked with you you find yourself going into states of depression you find yourself being drained you find yourself being lost you find yourself being confused and not having anybody to come to your aid when you need help and the lord says this is not good and the lord sees you and he wants you to know that he sees that you have been doing this alone and not much longer not much longer now 
your destiny helpers are on the way and you need to be praying for these people that are coming into your life and you also have to be positioning your heart to receive the help especially as single mothers a lot of us are very weary a lot of us are very afraid to receive help you know from people that we don't know that well or people who haven't been in our lives that long it's kind of like we don't know you like that and we're afraid to receive the help not only because we don't know them that well and they may seem like a stranger but also we want to protect our children and we want to protect our own hearts because many of us have been put in situations before where we have had people in our lives who seemed like they were for us or for our kids and then they forsook our kids right they said forget us and then in turn forgot the children and it hurt the children and so a lot of us are very guarding of that i'm very very protective over my children i have made many mistakes in the past by you know casually allowing certain people whom i thought cared about me um in my life around my children and they just kind of like you know said forget me and then in turn they forgot about my kids you know and my children would constantly ask about them ask why they don't come around anymore ask why they're not being seen anymore um why they're not spending time with certain people anymore and i kind of was just really weary of letting more people in because of the past hurt and disappointments my children have had to endure because i did not vet people properly because i did not seek the lord about who i was allowing into my life and my children's lives but the lord is saying today that it's not something that you're going to have to worry about that is not something that we are going to have to worry about um also when it comes to single mothers um a lot of you have been forsaken by the men who have helped you create these families um i can also bear witness to this as well um and a lot of these men are not doing what they're supposed to do they are not taking care of their own and the lord sees this and he sees this and a lot of you are carrying a lot you're carrying the weight of a mother a father a caretaker a teacher and this anointing and you're also carrying a ministry on your back okay a lot of you are pregnant with purpose and you're carrying this purpose and it's heavy and it's weighing you down while you're trying to carry all these other things and the lord is telling you that you were never supposed to be carrying all these things alone there were people in your life who were supposed to pick up those mantles and they were supposed to walk with that mantle with honor and they chose not to they were supposed to do what they were called to do when it came to you and they chose not to I remember when I became a mother a second time to my son. The first time it was easy, you know, that first baby will really deceive you into having more for real. But my daughter was, for the most part, easy. But when I had my second son, that just sent me into a whirlwind of a different type of life that I did not know I would be in. And I was expecting help from people that never came. I thought I would have support that I did not end up having and, and it took a turn for the worse. My life ended up being so much harder because I did not have community and I did not have people supporting me or my children the way that they were supposed to. People were not showing up for us in the ways they were supposed to. And some people will say, you know, oh, they did help. They sent you some money. But some people need to realize that all help is not the help that is needed. Right. And somebody will shoot you $20 and say, here goes $20. Go get yourself some lunch when really you just need a break not good to do all these things continuously without breaks without support without people helping you keep order without people helping you do what the lord has called you to do and just because you are a mother does not mean you have to forsake your call that you have to forsake your anointing that you have to forsake the dreams that the lord has planted on the inside of you i have seen so many women watch their dreams die and their callings be under the ground because they felt like they had to be a mother and that they couldn't be both. And the Lord is saying today that you can be whatever he has called you to be. And he is going to send the people into your life to help you be who he has called you to be. Because your anointing is bigger. It's bigger than just your family. And you picking up that mantle and you accepting the call is important for your family as well. It's important for these children to see their mothers their grandmothers their aunts picking up their mantle and accepting the call that god has on their life it is pivotal it is pivotal that you allow your children to bear witness to your testimony it is pivotal that you allow your children to see you following your dreams and doing the things that the lord has placed inside of you it is pivotal that you do it so that they can remember 
And when your child reaches a point in their life where they are struggling and they, they don't know what to do, they remember what you went through. They remember the God that you serve. And they remember how the God that brought you out of tough times is the same God that's over their life. They will remember. It is important. Exodus chapter 18, 18, also that confirmation number, 18, 18. I've been seeing that a lot. I've been saying, seeing 811 a lot. I've been seeing 411, 511, 911 a lot. 311. Exodus 18, 18, it says, Thou shalt, thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform this thyself alone cannot be superwoman you are not to be you are not meant to be superwoman for these men out here if you're a man watching this that woman in your life is not a superwoman you are not meant to be a superman you need help you need help you need destiny helpers if you're a man and you're watching this and you're a father you're a single father help is on the way help is on the way you do not have to do this alone you do not have to do this alone. It's not good for you to do this alone. And you will have the help. You will have the destiny helpers that you need. And you will be able to answer that call. And you will be able to do what the Lord has called you to do. There have been people who have sat by and watched you struggle. And a lot of these people have sat by and watched you struggle because they wanted to watch you fail. They didn't think you were going to make it. They're like, oh, it's almost like, oh, let's see what happens next. Are they going to fall? Are they going to fall? Oh, they didn't fall this time. Maybe next time. There are some people who are watching you and they're encouraging you secretly. They're praying for you secretly. But there are a lot of people who were supposed to help you that did not. In my prayer time, um, the Lord revealed to me that there's a lot of people. The Lord placed me on their hearts. The Lord said he placed me on their hearts. He said that he instructed them to reach out. He instructed them to help. He said he instructed them to do things that he placed it in their heart to do. But he said they did not. He didn't tell me who these people were. He didn't tell me who these people were. But he said he placed me on a lot of hearts. But a lot of people did not do what they were supposed to do. So do understand that the Lord is communicating with people. He is telling them, hey, reach out to this person. Hey, get back connected with this person. Hey, keep your eye on this person. I, I need you to do something for them in the times to come. The Lord is vouching for you and the Lord is sending people to you. He is putting you in people's hearts. I said before, do not be afraid to accept the help. When people all of a sudden want to start helping you in the ways that you need help, do not turn it down. Do not turn it down. Because you are not supposed to be doing this alone. So when the Lord presents you with the opportunity to not do it alone anymore, choose to not do it alone. Learn how to accept the help that God is sending to you. A lot of us have been in isolation so long and been doing this and been in survival mode for so long that trusting someone else with things that we've been carrying on our own for so long seems like such a big deal. When you're trusting someone else with something the Lord gave to you and if the Lord is sending a helper to you and he's entrusting them with the very thing he entrusted you with as well, do know the Lord has stamped them, is vouching for them. And some of them may not come in the form that you think they may come. Some of you think that your divine helpers are going to be your spouse. You think, oh, I'm going to get that help when my spouse comes. And the Lord is not going to send you a spouse. He's going to send you some real helpers. These are some people who are going to be like um, an armor bearer of sorts. Your, hummer, your, your husband is not your armor bearer. You need somebody who is going to respect you. Somebody who sees work that needs to be done. Somebody who honors you and loves you and whatever comes with you in a platonic way and has a sense of responsibility to you because the Lord assigned them to you. Who is going to be loyal, who is not going to be finicky, flaky, who not going to be talking about you every time you get on their nerves or, you know, you say something and they now they're talking about you behind your back. They having conference calls about you and they're like, I'm going to quit. The Lord is genuinely sending your tribe. He is sending people that are for you. And some of these people are going to be lifelongers. Like these are going to be some people that are going to be in your life for the rest of your life. You're not going to have to worry about these people disappearing. You're not going to have to worry about these people going away. And that, that was something that 
I was afraid of. Um, I was afraid of destiny helpers coming into my life and getting attached just for them to disappear again. And I was like, I do not want to open up that door to be hurt, deserted and forsaken and rejected. And the Lord is like, these people are going to be lifelongers. They're going to be in your life for the rest of your life. You're not going to have to worry about them going anywhere. I said, okay. The Lord is also um, saying to me today to not rely on people who are in the world, who are not of him to do for you, right? When I became a mother the second time around, I was really heavily reliant on my children's father. And I was like, you know what? He He's going to come through. He's going to... Um, do this Y and Z, he's gonna do this, he's gonna do that. I just need to hold it down, you know, a little while while he's figuring things out and then a year pass and then two years pass and then four years pass and then seven years pass and I'm still just like, okay, is he ever gonna come through? And the Lord is like, I am your provider. The Lord is telling me, you know, told me not to rely on this person. Even though this person had a responsibility, they had a sense of obligation to me, the Lord is like, don't rely on him. Don't rely on him. Don't shift your life around him. Because you can't count on him, but you can count on me. And whatever he did not do, I will do. And whatever torches people put down, I will have your destiny helpers pick them back up. You may have to carry this for a while on your own, but you are going to have some people come into your life who are going to change your life, who are going to show you what community really is. Who are going to show you what love really is. Who are going to show you what friendship really is. What sisterhood really is. What it means to be a sister in Christ. What it means to have a brother in Christ. What it means to have community. And that's something I've never had. And so I couldn't even imagine it. But the Lord will always reassure me help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. These people ain't going to check out this time. There were people in my life last year whom I believed, this, last year and the year before, whom I believed were destiny helpers, people who I thought were going to be in my life permanently, who forsook me, like people who left. And then there were some people the Lord had me distance myself from. And I felt like I was taking more L's than wins. But again, with the prophetic word that I just released the other day, your decrease is preparing you for increase. And sometimes the Lord is removing people. And sometimes somebody abandoning you and forsaking you or betraying you is a blessing. Even though it may hurt, even though it may not make sense in that moment, but it is a blessing. And the Lord is clearing space to make room for others. He is clearing the room so that the right people can be in the right room. Help is on the way for my single parents, for my people out there who are lonely, who are struggling who have an anointing on their life, that the Lord has called them to do some really important big things in the times to come, and you know you can't do it alone. You know you can't do it alone. And you've been struggling and you've been asking God, like, how am I going to do this? You told me I'm going to do all these things. How am I going to do this when it's just me, when I'm a one-man, one-woman team? And the Lord is like, I am sending help, being able people. He is sending able people. Maybe some of the people who were in your life before were not able to be what they were trying to be. They were trying to fill shoes that were too big for them. They simply were not able to fill the shoes they were trying to put on. And the Lord is saying, forgive the people who forsook you. Forgive the people who left you. Forgive the people who did you dirty in the last seasons. Forgive the people who betrayed you. Forgive the people who claim to be your brothers or your sisters in Christ. People who claim to care about you. Forgive them. Forgive the people who, who stopped caring about your children. Forgive the people who didn't show up for your children, the people who were saying that they loved them so bad, but then they just stopped caring about them. The Lord said, forgive them. And do not allow these destiny helpers to inherit the hurt that these people gave you in previous seasons. Because these people that are coming into your life are genuine. They are beautiful people. You're gonna be so shocked. You're gonna be like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know people like this existed. I didn't even know people were capable of showing up for me in this way. I didn't know I could be loved at such a capacity. You're going to be crying a lot of tears of joy in this next season. You're going to be like, I am so loved. I am so loved. I am so supported. I am so seen. I am so understood. You're not going to have to be fighting to be understood. 
These people are going to be like, nah, we got you. We know you. We love you. We see you. We understand you. We want you. You're going to be wanted in this next season. You're not going to be in a room and feel like you don't belong there. You're not going to be with a group of people and feel out of place. These are people who are going to be in your children's lives forever. They're going to be at graduations and barbecues alike, church services alike, revivals alike, room shakers, worshipers, only something that God can put together. You're going to have a family that only God could have put together. Exodus 18 verse 15 it says and Moses said unto his father-in-law because the people come unto me to inquire of God a lot of you are prophetic have prophetic voices you have a prophetic anointing on your life and the Lord has called you to a platform to speak to be his mouthpiece in the times that we are in and that can be a heavy burden sometimes being prophetic because a lot of people are pulling on you tugging on you they're going to need you there's a lot of people you're going to be assigned to. Some of you may be pastors. Some of you may be ministers of some sort. Some type of position in ministry that's going to require you to oversee people, whether they're little people or big people. I remember asking the Lord, I'm like, I felt like I should have been so much further along. It was a video that I was talking about being neurodivergent and feeling like I should have been so much further along in ministry by now. And the Lord is like, you cannot do what I'm calling you to do alone. You know, there are people that have to come into your life first before I can allow you to go into this next place because this next place you're going into, you're going to need help. You're going to need assistance. You're going to need community. You're going to need people to support you and your children in this next season. If I gave you what I wanted to give you now, it would break you. It would be extremely heavy. It would be too much. And I didn't understand that. So I'm in a waiting season. A lot of us are in a waiting season. And the Lord is like, the helpers are on the way. And in this season, a lot of people who are in your past are going to be trying to come back. They're going to be trying to rekindle. Do not allow counterfeit friendships, situations, ships, people who are trying to come back into your life and act like they're coming back with good intentions to distract you. Those are not your destiny helpers. And although you are to forgive those people from the previous seasons and not treat them any type of way, you are still to be mindful of who they are, who they showed you who they were when they were dealing with you before in previous seasons. Many of them have not changed. There is a um, post that I made at the beginning of this year called Vindication is Coming, where a lot of people are going to come to you with apologies. A lot of people are going to come to you, you know, about a lot of things that they did to you in previous seasons and how it was wrong. And try to make amends. But that does not mean access is granted for them to come back into your life. Access may very much so still be denied. But the Lord may allow them to come back into your life to make amends. To make things right. To vindicate you. To let you know that in those previous seasons you weren't tripping. In those previous seasons you were done dirty. In those previous seasons those people may have deceived themselves into believing a lie. It was not true or may have been deceived by someone else. And that's actually what the, my next prophetic word is about. Mm. They may have deceived themselves into believing that you were someone other than what the Lord showed them that you were. And they turned against you and they turned on you, even though you were extremely genuine. And this is not me projecting, this is just coming. Even though you were extremely genuine, even though you were kind and